it somewhere like that. One example, wave sensor. You hardly ever see it. You know what they want to do? You just slam it around, stop, and go back, not lose any ground down wind, or you probably probably be tapped. So the moment is, you've got power, in front of you, you've got this lovely flat area, and you can see that as you go through the jive, you're going to be powered all the way around. And the other thing, what happens, I think, with planing jives, and jiving in general, people tend to get stuck in a kind of routine of just not doing it. And so, if you are there, you've got to actually say, I've got to try something different. Yeah. It may mean crashing horribly, but at least it'll be different. And actually, if you think what happens with most people, they're not paying out their jive, the first thing they do as they go in, is they whack the handbrake on, mentally and physically, because they think, at least if I do crash, it won't hurt as much. But that, of course, isn't. So what you do, you, you, you work out, this is rather simplistic, but if you're going into a jive at 25 knots, 20 knots, whatever it might be, and you come out at two knots, somewhere you've lost speed. <laughs> and you've got to decide where that is. And quite often, it's very simple things you change to make the difference. And right at the beginning, that's where most people lose it. They go, go from hooked in and hooning along to uh, just about to jive. They've already lost 10 knots. So that's one area we look at. But before that, I'd just like to just point out a couple of things with the equipment and the setup again to make a massive difference and um, you may have heard this before but sorry the, uh, you're gonna have to drive this thing as if it were a surfboard around a corner and if it were a surfboard just think how you'd stand on it or if it's a skateboard even. And when you go on a skateboard you don't pull surf, you don't stand on the edge like that because it's very hard to drive that edge in instead you put one foot there and one foot right in the middle and when you do that turn, especially on a surfboard, you actually load up the front foot, that's basically your balance between your feet, and then you use that foot as the piston to drive the edge. But actually what happens to a lot of people when they, when they windsurf is they're stuck on the edges, the one foot's there, and when they put that foot there, they drop back. And so they're not using that foot as a platform, they're using the rig as a platform and just driving here. So the first thing that happens is the nose lifts, the tail drops, and they're dragging a bucket. So I think it's so important is to think more and more about your front foot. And if your jiving is your main thing, then I would say that you're trying to get on board sub 120, where you can, this is a 140 actually, is a bad example, but where you can get that front foot on or near the center line. And you can see the way I've set the strap up here. It's on the inner settings and it's big. And um, I'm terribly, I've been very rude. I have introduced George. George Shalita, you've probably seen the mugs. Uh, top wave sailor, what are you now, George? Yeah, top 10. Yeah. Eight. 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 The bike goes that way and you go that way. And that's what happens a lot of jives. So what's got to happen is as you go into the turn, the first thing is you're going to drop the hips and shoulders and then the knees. And if that knee can't bend or if the ankle can't bend, I don't know if you can see that there, what happens is you just come up on your toes, the ankle gets blocked, your backside goes that way and that's where you jive from. And you never make that move across the board so where you can hold the forces of the turn. And it just means opening that front strap up enough so this could happen if you watch the angel like that. And once you get that feeling of that ankle bend, other people say bend the knees, which is good, but actually bend the ankles. That's what you're doing. And then as you bend the ankles, you should see this great symmetry where your upper body and your shin and your rig are all at the same angle. And that will push you to the right part of the turn. So that's the first thing that makes a huge difference. And then just with the rig. Make sure it's big enough. I mean, that's the deal. It's a trouble is with modern boards today. They plane kind of quite easily. So far as you can be in the foot straps and think you're planing, but actually they're still displacing a bit of water because they're so wide and thick in the tail. You can stand here and go along. But they're not fully released. And so the, the test you do to make sure you've got enough power to jive is to go along, and bear away. And if you bear away and accelerate. Then you're powered up. If you bear away and stop, you're not. So that's um, 
part of the thing of playing each other, just having that right amount of power. And then, yeah, I suppose just with a combo, I see a lot of people these days, because boards will take it, using very big rigs on quite small boards. So, you know, say you've got, I don't know, a 7.5 and you put it on a 100 litre or a 95, yeah, it'll go, but what happens is you've got so much dead weight from the rig pushing downwards, and when you get to that, there you go, okay? You get to that critical moment, uh, and you're letting the rig go. Just for that moment now, all that dead weight is pushing the board down and stopping it. There's a little bit more volume allows it just to keep going. So just matching board and rig has a massive um, influence on how you're going to play. Let's get to the, uh, the technical side of it. Let me ask you a question. What part of your body do you think starts your car job? Head. Nice one, good, I like that, head's good. Yeah. Head, head. Well, it's, it's actually right, I was thinking, Shell, but head's even better than I was going to say, actually. Because what a lot of people do, if I worry about me, just saying it, is they use the back foot. So the back foot comes out, and that's the trigger to go into a jive. So they usually start dropping back. And actually what should happen is, it's the head moving forward, and a roll of the shoulder. Have you got me there, George? Yeah, I think so. It is from here, it is this loop. So you're coming forward, actually off balance with the head, the shoulder, and so the first thing that happens is you're dropping, I'm sorry if you can't see over there, but I'm dropping onto my front hand to hold the nose back. So this is the way we're trying to think about jiving now, is you've got three legs, no longer two. And this one here, the mast foot, is your front foot, or your front leg. And what you're looking to do when you jive is, that's it, that's the subject, is to load up your front foot first. So you're laying the board flat, here we are again George, so there, and from that position with all that weight, the nose goes down, then you can carve the board. But if you start your jive with your hips behind your feet, and you start doing that, you've got no pressure on the mast foot, although you'll start to carve, the nose will come up more and more, and gradually you'll stop. I'm just going to take it back a step from there, when I mentioned in the beginning where you lose all your speed, and most of it is as you start. So George, if I can just have you, have you give me a force five. So I'm just going to be hooked in, just give me a, come to me a little bit, that's lovely. Just slightly squiggle. So when you're going along like this, what most people do when they start the jive is they sheet out. So this is what we're going to do now. Without doing anything, just cracking along, your backhand creeps back as far as it can without you getting off balance. And I know there's a lot of things about move the backhand back. A lot of people do this, and now they're already on weight of the back foot and moving back too much. So that's the action, just to there. And then to unhook, all you do, just a bit more power there, George, is lift the hips and pull down on the arm. It's that. That's all it is. It's no big shake of the rig. And now you're holding the power on your body, you need to lower your body weight. That's like that, fantastic. And this is a bit where it all goes wrong. People actually move the back foot out of the strap and carve at the same time. So they go, yee haw! Bang! Just a bit body parts everywhere. So here, give me again, George. And then instead, it's sink down even further. I haven't gone away yet. And then just move onto the front foot slightly and then move that foot out and back again. If you want to wait the back foot, of course you've got to move forward. So you power up there. If you like, you can actually just power off tight slightly. And now you're ready to jive when you haven't lost any speed. And that's the main, that's, that is your, the one thing which will give you so much more speed into it. And then the other thing you'll see, maybe if you watch the slalom, the, the good guys today, they start the preparation pretty early. So they're out, they're going so fast, they get out and they're in this position, unhooked and everything, for a good two or three, four seconds to let everything settle down. And now the next part, which I think, I don't know about George, would relate to wave sailing and the bottom turn, is laying the rail, right? Yeah. It's quite involved. Yeah, that bit. So as you start your jive, what I like to do is try, where are you going to look? And I like to look around the, the master. You look at that bit of rail there and you think, I want to see the water hit that bit. And the way the modern boards are designed now, you see the curve in it, once this little bit of the board hits the water, it'll start to hook round. So it's not your back foot in the shape of the turn, it's here. And then only what's going to happen is the pressure goes front foot, middle, back, all the way through the turn. So you start by putting the front in, and then you start to carve off the back foot. So let's look how you do that. 
Are you ready for me, George? This, yeah. is, like, this is a bit we've rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm coming in, and what I'm going to try and do before I actually carve is get my head to do this action here. So it's like my hips are overtaking the, the ring, like that. And now I'm looking to that bit of rail. The next thing I have, all I've got to do with my backhand down is pull here as I bear away. And that loads up the front of the sail, and we're over. Now, if you don't do anything now, you're going to fall over, obviously. But as you're doing that, you're bearing away, and the board's shooting off downwind. And in fact, if you don't do what I just did, you will fall off the back. So it's like this. It's full curl, and that's the position you want to be in. And if anyone uh, here just afterwards, I'll put you in that position, and you wonder, I don't think I was quite that far forward. <laughs> but that, it feels quite weird here, but that actually isn't that extreme. And if you were going for the full Monty edge, like the full bottom turn type thing, it is right down there. That's the difference would be though that the board would be like that. Thank you, George. No worries. They're all weak. And this is just a, a trigger. You know, when you, you watch a golfer or a gymnast start their routine, there's always that little or something which gets everything in motion. And what you need for the jive is to have the right trigger. And I think it is, as we're going in, is this little roll. For me now, when I start a jive, I just think it's that. Once that goes, that shoulder goes, and everything will follow. Uh, 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 That's kind of the, uh, the joy of jiving, is that beautiful feeling of dropping into it. And I think if you ask everyone here why, where they feel they're messing it up, it's at the end. Because that's the last bit they remember. And the rig and foot change will be difficult if you haven't got any speed through the back of the turn. So I'm just going to want you to imagine now that if I jive round, if I do this side, George, 